What's up guys, my name is Elle and welcome to or back to the coffee shop project. Today we're on to part two of the Apotheos Roastery Tour. So if you haven't seen part one, it's gonna pop up in the iCard, get caught up and come back here because today we're building on it by exploring how to make nitro cold brew from the bright tanks to the cans. So subscribe down below and let's get into it. So these are our bright tanks. We have two 15 barrels and a 20 barrel. And as whenever we're making our cold brew, our final, we can brew up to 750 gallons of cold brew. Oh my gosh, wow. That's a lot of cold brew. Um, these uh, bright tanks are um, fully jacketed with glycol. So we like to keep it in between 36 and 41 degrees. Um, it, it basically just takes the, the heat that's there and it transfers it out to um, the glycol machine okay. outside that uh, basically acts as a big heat sink and it dispels all the heat and it runs it back through and it keeps it cold mm -hmm. and just keeps going over and over. Awesome, okay. So it keeps it at whatever temperature I want it to be at. I know a lot of people um, have different uh, methods for uh, extracting the cold brew in. Some people will throw it just in the tank, uh -huh. no filter, nothing. Just like seep it in there? Um, kind of like if you had tea in a, you know, just a little one cup teapot, mm -hmm. um, you just throw leaves in with no filter and then whenever it's done, all the leaves will still be in there and then you discard it in the trash. Um, for us, we don't do it that way and I can't really talk about how we do it. It's part of the reason that the cold brew uh, ends up as clean as it does. Right. This is our canning line. Okay. Uh, this is where a lot of the cool stuff happens because um, it just looks cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, essentially what we have here is we have a depalletizer, which okay. automatically, we forklift the cans in and there's sensors on this depal. This is actually a, a, called a half pint. Okay. Um, it's made by uh, Scott Fabricating. And the sensors tell the uh, lift to raise. And then whenever there's no cans on the turntable up top, pushes the cans forward down into the, uh, to the line right here where they get, uh, the inside gets cleaned out. Okay. And then they make their way down onto the conveyor belt. Now, this is a, a can sleever. Uh, a lot of places don't do their own sleeving. Uh -huh. They usually put a pack with right. uh, someone else. They'll usually go from their decal straight to their uh, can filler. Uh, we wanted to be able to have flexibility. Yeah. So, uh, and come up with new flavors as we see fit. We don't have to wait on somebody to, we don't have to get in a line. Um, plus we have the uh, flexibility to, instead of uh, having to run an entire pallet of a certain type of uh, brew. Right. Um, we can stop halfway through that pallet and switch out the roll. For, oh. So the roll of our labels are right here and we can put on a different flavor uh, label and it gives us flexibility to not uh, make too much product or too little. So cans come through, the sensor right here, there's a delay on it and then it shoots the can down. So the can will start out like so. Whenever the sleeve goes on, it looks really big. There's actually two layers okay. to this label, an inner and an outer. And whenever the can goes through the heat tunnel, the inner layer will shrink up and then the outer layer doesn't distort. This uh, can filler is called a wild goose. Okay. Um, I love this machine. Um, it's not 100% fully automated, like the how it's made uh, mm -hmm. videos, but there's still some user interface involved. Okay. Um, I have to control levels, um, uh, how much brew goes into each individual can. But once it's set, it, and the pressure is consistent, mm -hmm. it takes care of itself and we weigh out the cans at the end. Now, uh, this machine is made from all food grade plastics. Um, it's uh, all pneumatic except for the conveyor. Um, so, uh, and the seamer. Uh, so it's easy to clean, Yeah. which is really important. Uh, you don't have to worry about um, any porous areas where uh, bacteria will pass through or things like that. Uh -huh. So uh, cans come through whenever the sensors um, are activated, it does a fill cycle. Right now we're set up for uh, two group heads, but um, we can have a maximum of five. Wow, okay. So right now we do about 25 cans a minute, um, and it can be way more than that in the future. Uh, this is our nitro doser. This mm -hmm. is pretty much a standard for all cold brew right now. Uh, uh, we've looked at a lot of different people's setups and uh, everybody's using the same 
What is a nitro doser? Um, so it takes liquid nitrogen and it drops it on the uh, top of the cold brew okay. to get rid of uh, that oxygen headspace. So with nitro, uh, a cool thing happens in the can. And it, it since it's in that high pressure environment, uh, it uh, nitro is that small amount of liquid. So it will, whenever you pour it into your glass, it'll actually give it a, a quarter inch of a head on the top. Okay. Much like a craft beer. It drops the liquid nitrogen on top, uh, it gets a lid, comes into our steamer. This is the steamer right here? Uh, this guy right here. This will... Okay, this yeah, steamer. got it. And then it's a two step and it basically takes the lid and it folds it down. Okay. It crimps the lid onto the can. It doesn't actually like seal it like a weld or anything mm -hmm. like that. So, um, you know, there are seam specs. So you have to make sure that your cans aren't leaking or anything like that. So, and then they get rinsed off. They come and we pop a collar on it, much like what uh, people will see with uh, craft beer brewery right now. Okay. And put it in the box and then take it off to the cold storage. Thank you so much for watching this episode of The Coffee Shop Project. I hope you understand Nitro Cold Brew a little bit better now. I definitely do. And special thanks to Luke and Jason for that. You can check out all things Apotheos in the description below. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you Saturday. Bye guys.